Welcome back. Let's get started with real money purchases. We already have a real money purchase set up in the dashboard and the in-app purchases package is installed. The Unity IAP package recently had a big update to version 5, so I'm calling my script IAP Store Manager version 5 to be clear about the version. Let's get right to this IAP Store Manager from the client side, and then we'll do cloud code afterwards. Open up your new IAP Store Manager script or create one if you don't have it. IAP version 5 uses an event-based system with Store Controller, which is in the Unity engine.purchasing namespace. As we'll see in a minute, the store controller exposes events for fetching products and previous purchases and events for the purchase lifecycle. Let's start at the top. We have a serialized reference to the player economy manager, constants for real money purchase product IDs, same as the IDs set up in the dashboard. We have a Boolean for state tracking with is purchase in progress. We have our store service bindings for calling cloud code functions. We'll use the store controller, and we also have a receipt validation component. Note that a fake store is automatically used when running in the Unity editor, so we don't need any use fake store flag. We also should have some events for purchase outcomes, like successfully purchased and purchase failed, both with a string that could be a message for the player. Let's move on to the initialization flow. In start, we set up event subscription to economy config synced and create our cloud code bindings instance. Let's look back at the player economy manager as a refresher on the initialization flow we're using here. In the economy manager, we're firing this event after we sync with our economy configuration. And this sync happens when the player is signed in. In effect, we're setting the store up when we have a valid customer, an authenticated player, and we have the economy configuration synced, which will have all of the purchases. When the economy config syncs, we set up the IAP system in the initialize IAP async method. Let's take a look at that next. We first get the store controller using Unity IAP services.storeController. We attach event handlers for purchase events and subscribe IAP events. We'll look at that in a moment. We then call connect to establish connection with the store. And once connected, we fetch products asynchronously. For products, we'll create a list of product definitions and then do a check in case the list is empty. And then we'll call fetch products with that list and initialize receipt validators if needed. Fetch products is an asynchronous operation that queries the platform store like Google Play, Apple App Store, etc., with your product IDs. This is like asking the store, hey, I want to sell products with these IDs. What are their current prices and details? And then the store responds with the latest information in the user's local currency and language. We're, of course, configuring the products via code from the Unity Economy Dashboard's real money purchase configuration, but you can also use the IEP catalog system. The catalog is up in services and in-app purchasing, and there you'll see IAP catalog and also the codeless IAP components, IAP button, and IAP listener. We've already set up real money purchases in the dashboard, so we'll add the products directly from the configuration in the economy service. But if you're using the IAP catalog instead of the economy configuration, you would need to load products a little bit differently, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Back in the IAP store manager, let's move on to build product definitions from economy. In build product definitions from economy, we prepare our product definitions list. We get a list of real money purchase definitions from the economy configuration and then convert those definitions into IAP product definition objects. That is, for each purchase in the real money purchases, we create a product definition with the appropriate product ID and type, which is going to be consumable. So we're assuming that all real money purchases in the economy config are consumables, items that can be purchased multiple times. If you have a non-consumable product, like removing ads, you should handle that in the IAP catalog or directly in code, since it's not relevant to the game economy and therefore can't be set up in the economy resources dashboard. If you need different IDs per platform, you can specify them, but the recommended approach is using the same ID across all platforms where possible. As we saw before, we return this list of product definitions so the products can be passed to store controller fetch products so Unity IAP knows about them. If you do use the IAP catalog and aren't using the buttons or listeners, here is a method to build and fetch the products from the IAP catalog JSON file. We load the JSON with product catalog, load default catalog, convert its items into product definitions, and then call fetch products to retrieve prices and metadata from the store. Note that there's also a catalog provider class, and it's not the same as the IAP catalog JSON. Catalog provider is only a manual container you populate in code with product definitions, just saying that to prevent confusion. The last method we called in initialize IAP is initialize receipt validator. This method sets up the cross-platform validator that verifies purchase receipts are legitimate, 
which is crucial for protecting your game's economy and revenue. We skip validation in the editor, but in builds, we simply check if the current platform is Android. In IP version 5, Apple uses StoreKit 2, which handles receipt validation internally, so we only need cross-platform validator for Google Play. The cross-platform validator constructor takes two parameters, the Google Play public key, obfuscated in the Google Play tangle data, and our application's bundle identifier. The validation system helps prevent common fraud attempts by verifying digital signatures on purchase receipts, ensuring they come from legitimate app stores and haven't been tampered with. It's a good first line of defense against basic fraud attempts, though we'll take things further with additional server-side validation. Let's next look at our event handlers. We have on products fetched, called when products are successfully retrieved from the store, and then we have on purchases fetched, which is called when past purchases are retrieved. If the player has a subscription or non-consumable, like DLC, you'll want to restore these purchases after a player has reinstalled the game. Restore transactions is on the store controller. We have our purchase lifecycle events, and then of course we handle failures through event handlers, and these each provide detailed information to help identify and fix any issues. Let's go through all these event handlers. On products fetched, we fetch past purchases and log the available products. And all of these other handlers, we're just doing logging. All right, I want to move on to the purchase flow, so pause if you want to copy this. On to the purchase flow. Purchase Gold is the public entry point to start a gold purchase. So it includes a safety check to prevent multiple simultaneous purchases with is purchase in progress. And then in version 5, you can purchase by ID directly via the controller. Store controller, purchase product, and then the gold purchase ID. That then fires the on purchase pending event and our handler receives the pending order. After a couple checks, we get the receipt. And then for Google Play, we check the receipt client side. We then send the receipt and product info to CloudCode for server-side validation. Assuming that all goes well and we get the updated economy data back with the granted purchase, we update the local economy data. And then we confirm the purchase with confirm purchase pending order after everything succeeds. You'll probably want to comment out the CloudCode function initially since we haven't written it yet. And here's the validate if Google method that uses the cross-platform validator we defined at the top of the script. And then last, we have on purchase confirmed. In purchase confirmed, it's important to check if the order is a failed order. That way you have a safeguard if anything goes wrong. For example, when using Google Play billing, you'll get a failed order if you try to confirm a purchase without network access. And here we'll fire our own successfully purchased event with a message with info from the order. And on purchase failed, we fire our purchase failed event here with the failure reason. And in both, we set the is purchase in progress flag false. Small note here before we do cloud code, when you run this, you might see a warning about on purchase deferred not having a callback defined. Unity IAP is recommending we handle deferred purchases. Uh, that is appropriate for something like parental approval scenarios. For basic functionality, you can just add a simple handler for on purchase deferred with a log. All right, let's implement the cloud code. In on purchase pending, the IAP manager is calling a cloud code function called process real money purchase and we're passing the product ID, the raw receipt data, and the price and currency code for additional validation. Open up your cloud code solution, and in store service, let's implement this function. Process real money purchase is our entry point, but it's process store receipt that actually handles the heavy lifting, parsing the receipt to extract the store type, and routing to the appropriate purchase redeeming method. We'll look at that in a moment. For error handling, we catch API exception to handle economy service API errors and include a general exception catch for any other unexpected errors. Finally, if everything succeeds, we return the updated player economy data, giving the client fresh currency and inventory information after the purchase. Before we go on, it's important to mention that you can add your own business logic validations before process store receipt. For example, maybe you have a new player bonus or a veteran player discount, you can check for that in a validate player eligibility method. And these validations would run in cloud code right here before we process the receipt. You'll also want to have the same validation logic client side because a player shouldn't be able to purchase something they aren't eligible for. This dual validation or authoritative server validation means we have the client validating for the UX and it saves you money on the server call, but the server has the final authority. Again, the advantage with cloud code is that this custom validation can't be bypassed by hacks and you maintain full control over your game's purchase policies. Let's move on to look at process store receipt. 
First, we parse the receipt to determine which store the purchase originated from. The receipt structure includes the store, which identifies the platform, Google Play, Apple, or fake, and a payload, which contains the actual receipt from the store. If the store is fake, we call apply purchase rewards from configuration. We want to test the IEP flow in the editor without requiring store connections. Let's first look at the redeem store methods for Google and Apple, and then we'll look at fake store purchase granting. For Google Play purchases, create a player purchase Google Play Store request with product ID, extracted Google receipt, JSON, and signature, and the local cost and currency code. Above, you'll need to parse the nested JSON payload to extract the receipt data and the signature the purchase request needs. Then call redeem Google Play Purchase Async to validate the receipt against Google servers and apply the purchase rewards. For Apple App Store purchases, create a player purchase Apple App Store request with similar parameters, only here we can directly use the string receipt data. Call redeem Apple App Store Purchase Async to validate against Apple servers and apply the purchase rewards. Above, in Process Real Money Purchase, we're returning updated economy data to the client, which will include the rewards. But here we have logging of the exact rewards and the purchase result, which you may also want to return to the player. And now for the fake store, for testing, we grant rewards manually through Apply Purchase Rewards from Configuration, which fetches the economy configuration, looks up the purchase definition, we're trying to find the real money purchase by ID using get real money purchase from config, and then we grant rewards with distribute configured rewards. Let's look at get real money purchase from config. Here we're looking through the player's economy configuration to find a real money purchase by its ID. We loop through each config result and use actual instance to directly check if it's a real money purchase resource with the matching ID. If we find a match, we return it immediately. If it's not a real money purchase resource or the ID doesn't match, it's probably a currency item or virtual purchase, so we simply continue to the next result. And now let's look at distribute configured rewards. This method takes in the rewards list returned from a purchase and processes each one by extracting the rewards resource ID and amount, looking up what kind of resource it is, currency or inventory item, by comparing it against the synced economy configuration, and then it grants the correct reward using the appropriate economy API. Both of these new methods better fit the general responsibilities of our player economy service, so let's implement them there. Get resource type searches through the player's configuration results using actual instance to directly identify the resource type. We're accessing the actual resource object that's stored inside each wrapper, then using pattern matching with guard clauses to determine both the type and ID match. The pattern matching performs type checking, casting, and condition testing in one step. If actual instance is a currency resource with a matching ID, it gets cast to the currency variable and we return the string currency. And of course, then we do the same for inventory item resource. The when currency ID is equal to resource ID, that part's called a guard clause, and it adds an additional condition that must be true for the pattern to match. That way we can check both the type and ID in a single expression. We can also broaden this method to handle purchase types if it makes sense for this method to be a comprehensive resource type detector. In this case, distinguishing between currencies and items is important because the economy API treats them differently. So we return a string identifier that downstream methods can use. You could of course define an enum for resource type or use direct type handling, but using strings is pretty straightforward and clear. Once we know what kind of resource we're dealing with, we pass it to grant resource reward. This method branches based on the reward type. If it's a currency, we use our add currency method, and if it's an inventory item, we call the add or update inventory item amount method we implemented earlier for granting virtual purchases. Back in Unity, generate bindings and deploy your module. And then add the IAP store manager to a game object if you haven't already, and drag in the player economy manager. Also, set your button up now to trigger the purchase gold method in the IAP manager. Before we test things, we need to set up protection against validation circumvention with obfuscated validation keys, which is what the red text was talking about in the beginning of the last video. For your Google Play license key, you need to go to your Google Play console and monetize with play, and then monetization setup. And there where it says licensing, that's the key you need to put in the license key spot in the dashboard. You can find that from the main project page, and then go to settings and scroll down a little bit. 
right there, Google License Key. Once you do that, you should eventually see it in your Unity project, in project settings, and at purchasing, that red text will be gone and your key is right there too. For Android, click Obfuscate License Keys. And once that's done, it'll say Google Play Tangle has been generated and exists in your project. And Tangle here refers to scrambling or tangling up store validation keys to make them harder for attackers to find and extract. All right, let's test things out. We have a log that the store is connected, a log to see what our real money purchase definitions look like. I need to change those IDs to be the same. We have one product definition prepared, a log of the gold purchase ID. Let's try buying some gold. Okay, great. Then we have a log of the receipt contents. Here's that line for you if you want to add it. And then we have our pending and confirmed logs. And most importantly, we have more gold. So the purchase worked, at least for testing. From here, you'll want to set things up in the stores for the platforms you're targeting. So you need to follow Google and Apple's documentation for that. An easy way to get to the documentation of the supported stores is to go through the Unity IEP documentation at the link. And then from there, just go to supported stores. But wait, there's more. In the next video, the final for the series, we're gonna set up rewarded ads with Level Play. I'll see you there.